there's a lot of great roguelikes out there that a lot of people in the gaming industry have heard of and there's a lot of games that are people who are generally aware of the genre that know about them and of course you can't forget about all these small indie games well every genre in gaming has these types of games and every once in a while there's a game that deserves a lot more attention for how well it fits in its genre and how fun it is to play now these games aren't perfect but they're always impressive and in this video i'm going to be talking about the game revita it was released in the early access on steam on march 3rd of 2021 and fully released on steam and in nintendo switch on April 21st of 2022. Since early access, it's had over 1,000 reviews on Steam, with the reviews being very positive on average, which is a good sign. We can also see it was developed by Benstar, where you can see Revita is the only game made by this developer. According to Benstar's Twitter, they've been working on their small passion project for over six years, so this game has been in the works for a long while, and it turned out fantastic. But of course, what is Revita? What makes it special? Well, it's a twin-stick platformer game where you play as an unnamed child ascending a clock tower in pursuit of lost memories. You climb through multiple floors with each floor having a dozen or so levels and ending with a boss fight. This type of level style reminds me a bit of Bind of Isaac with how fast paced every single level can be. The movement is what you would expect from a platformer, but the shooter reminds me a bit of Enter the Gungeon or Neon Abyss, where you aim with the right or left joystick on top of shooting. The game has a small bullet hell aspect with enemies and bosses, so the general gameplay can give you some feeling of some of the most popular roguelike games of all time. But where Revita stands out is its currency system in the middle of a run. Your main currency is your own life. You can restore health or even gain more health by collecting souls off of enemies, or you can even sacrifice health to gain or upgrade relics. The game does a really good job at making you wonder what a good amount of health to sacrifice is. It really makes you think of a smart way to balance your health sacrifice to health restore at every run. The less damage you can avoid, the better, of course. Well, that's that's the general gist of the game, but let me explain the insides of a run. Once a run starts, you're traveling through multiple floors on multiple different levels. Every floor, you battle a small amount of enemies, and after the end of each floor, you gain soul for killing enemies, and then you can go to the next floor. Occasionally, enemies may drop pickup items such as health, shields, character buffs, keys, or even metro cards. I'm going to explain all of them really quickly as well. Health is something you can easily understand, I feel. Shields is extra health that cannot be restored and each shield can be hit twice on normal settings before getting destroyed. Now character buff pickups are small increases to damage, speed, range, fire rate, anything you can think of. Every single gun that you can start with has different percent values. Next is keys which has two different types of keys in the game. Firstly is a normal key which is used to unlock bonus areas after a room which could give you a secondary weapon, a relic, a buff, a minigame, really a lot of different options and the more you play the game the more options become available thanks to the contract that you save for souls which is another vital thing you can unlock with keys. When first starting the game, you will run into lost souls on almost every level, and every soul turns into an NPC that you can interact with inside or outside of a run. The second type of key is an imprisoned key, which you deliver to an imprisoned monster outside of a run, which will allow you to unlock a new relic to find. But of course, what the heck is a relic? Well, it's essentially just a buff that lasts your entire run, which you can upgrade after every level with your health, or you can discard your relics from an NPC and gain a free upgrade. You can hold as many relics as you want, and the game has hundreds of them, but watch out for curses, which are debuffs that last the entire run as well. Relics and curses can both be found in chests, but generally chests that cost health to open will not give you a curse most of the time. All right, and the last important pickup is Metro Tickets, which allow you to add random relics or stat changes at the start of a run, but it's not free. It'll either cost you health or you'll get a curse for those Metro Tickets. They're generally more of a buff, I feel like, as you can easily restore all your health. All right, let me talk about another easy way for you to gain relics also with another unique thing in the game, which is a fountain, which can be found once on every single level. You can choose from a set amount of relics based on how much health you have and choose to sacrifice X amount of health for whatever relics are offered. With the game having so many relics, I found the fountain much more reliable compared to chest, as I could actually see what relic I was getting. Really, other than all these pickup items and bonus rooms you can unlock with keys and all of this stuff, the runs are pretty simple. You kill as many enemies as possible, and once you run out of health, you respawn back to the metro, and all the souls gained in your run turn into the game's currency, Soul Coin. Now, in the metro station, you can do a few things before starting a new run. Firstly, let's talk about the imprisoned monster, as you're probably a little curious about him. If you collect any imprisoned keys on your run, you can deliver them to the monster, and they will turn into relics you can buy with your soul coins. Once the relics are bought, though, they'll have a chance to show up in your run and newly bought relics will actually be on your character for your next run. I personally like that a lot as it lets you see what the relic does and gives you a nice little buff for the run. But with the Imprison, you can only have two relics from them per run, so don't buy more than two before any run. And other than the Imprison, Soul Coins don't have much of a use besides buying hats for your character. 
which is cute, I guess. The only other purpose of them seems to be trading them in for materials from the Metro Apprentices, who are NPCs you get from the Lost Souls. I don't think these materials have a name in game, so let's just call them sticks, as that's what they kind of look like to me. You get a stick every time you kill a boss, and you get sticks for traded soul coins. The sticks are much more valuable, as they allow you to unlock new starting weapons and upgrade the Metro with vanity props in the background that serve no purpose whatsoever. But most importantly, the sticks allow you to expand the clock tower with new special rooms and small objects like a torch that gives you souls in your runs. Also, I'm sorry if they're officially not called sticks. I'm calling them sticks from now on. Sorry, not really sorry. Okay, anyways, that's the general idea of inside and outside of a run. And of all that, the game still does a lot of things right in my eyes. First and most importantly, I'm going to talk about the accessibility options the game has. I personally haven't changed any of these options as I'm fine with the default settings, but the game allows for so much customization to play the game your way. You can change your HUD, character, enemy outlines, the font if you don't like the pixelated graphics. Oh, you can even change how much damage the enemies may deal. Really, the accessibility options like this I feel are so underappreciated in a lot of games, and seeing all these options could really help improve the game for a lot of people. Now, for things I usually talk about that make a great roguelike game, it's difficulty enhancers and variety in items. I always like to compare difficulty enhancers to heated runs in Hades, as I know that game pretty well. In Hades, once you beat the game, you can modify the difficulty to your pleasing where enemies do more damage or faster, shops cost more money, bosses have new movesets, really so much. And the more you change, the higher your heat will go. And a lot of successful roguelites have fun, fair ways to modify the difficulty, and Revita is no different whatsoever. You can change the difficulty via shards, and every five shards added will also add a blessing, which will increase the relic rarity or allow the metro tickets to be cheaper. To gain access to shards, you must clear the game first, and me personally, I've cleared it once in about 20 hours of game time, and only have access to one shard at the moment. So you need to clear the game multiple times to keep enhancing the difficulty, which I personally don't mind. The game has 38 different shards, not counting the secret ones, and each shard has a different level doing more whatever the shard does. And of course, the shards can buff enemies, traps, bosses, they can nerf pickup items, and your character as a whole. I really love seeing the options to make the game as hard as you want, as it adds a lot of replayability to the game outside of a first completion. And of course, there's one more thing I really love in a roguelike, and it's a variety of items. This game has a good variety of all sorts of items with guns, relics, metro passes, hats, really you name it. Almost every starting weapon I've used feels pretty good and balanced without relics or buffs. Of course, later in a run, they feel horrible without relics or buffs, but that's just enemies getting stronger. But the starting weapons, they're all fine, and non-game-changing items like hats are also fine. They're cute little cosmetics, and if you look at my Team Fortress 2 hours, you know I love some goddamn hats. The biggest concern for me, which will lead into the negatives of the game, is the relics. Don't get me wrong, some of the relics are absolutely insane and super useful, but when you have almost 400 relics total, you're gonna have some pretty useless ones. I feel I've had my fair share of relics where I thought, why would I need this? Granted, you can just get rid of the relics after a level and get a free upgrade, but I'll say, sometimes you can just get a bunch of relics you don't like and it can make a run really hard and seem very unlikely to win. Outside of a decent amount of relics being negative, I don't have many negative thoughts to say about the game. Some people may argue that runs will get tedious pretty fast just fighting through the bosses and killing enemies so fast, but if you're doing that, just stop playing the game or make it harder. But with relics playing such a major part in the run and so many of them being bad, being able to choose between relics, especially in crates, would be nice as it gives you more control of your run. The devs made a recent post on Steam talking about future updates and it seems like something like this will be added pretty soon, so that's very nice to hear. But other than that, Ravita is a very solid game that has a very bright future. A few comments in previous videos suggested Ravita, and I was intrigued with the twin stick shoot and pixelated graphics and easy platforming, and of course the price was nice for 17 US dollars. This game's a hell of a bargain like most roguelikes are it seems. Now I covered a lot of the basics in this game, and I've had a lot of fun playing it, and I think you would too. The game has so many more secrets that I didn't fully cover because they're secrets. Go find them out yourself. I totally did. Yeah, yeah, totally. Either way, thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Oh, also, subscribe if you like the video. I make videos when I can, but I stream five days a week over on Twitch if you want to watch the games live. Okay, bye.